How are you guys doing? I want to give you a really good tip on how to go over the anxiety of going to nice hotels because this is a fear that a lot of people have. It's one of those kind of secret fears that a lot of people are embarrassed to talk about and um, they probably wouldn't admit it to someone else unless it was a, a close trusted friend. So the, re the reason why I'm bringing this up today because anxiety for me is, is been, um, has been a lifelong battle just like uh, all my followers and all the clients that I've ever coached over the years. But obviously, you know, for the first stage of my life, I didn't really deal with it well, I didn't face it, I shied away from things, you know, dating women, people, coming out of my comfort zone, gym, training, traveling, new places. And I always felt deep down that, although I had this anxiety, that somebody didn't have, I am good enough, you know, and, and I've got the courage to not necessarily completely overcome it, but to, but to face it and, and to conquer it. And, and, and maybe conquer and overcome are, are slightly different meanings. Because when you say overcome, w within that language, the understanding we have is that means you've completely got rid of it. But the real truth is you're never going to completely get rid of anxiety unless you stop being human and, and you're a cyborg. And I'm taking it. None of my followers are, are robots. Well, there might be a couple out there, but you understand what I'm saying but you can learn to become a master at facing it so much that you get to a point where you do feel it, but you can handle it. You are in control of it, and that's a great place to be. And that's where I get my, my clients to, uh, if they're open-minded and they've got the right attitude for coaching. So I've been getting a lot of questions um, from guys saying, are you still gonna coach guys on how to speak to women? Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a yes no answer because I did that for many years and I enjoyed it but it got to a stage where I kind of I wanted to move on from that and help guys more in, in more different areas because the way I see it once you've gained courage and confidence in one area where you've got anxiety you can really do it in any area you really can it's it's a mindset it's being open-minded it's being willing and it's basically, it come, it's, to make it simple, it's having the courage to do it. It doesn't require any books. You don't need to read books. You, you've just got to be willing to take the action and face that fear again and again and again. So coming back to hotels. Now, for me, obviously growing up, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow up rich. I, I grew up, it wasn't poverty, but compared to some people's standards of living, it's, uh, you know, minimum wage above minimum wage so going from a council estate um, my parents didn't actually tell me this or teach me this but the society and, and the adverts and all these kind of underlining rules that are not always said out loud but we take them on I developed this anxiety that I can't go into nice hotels because um, like they're not going to let me in and I just wasn't comfortable I was intimidated at that time so what I did was in, in 2000 when I come out of hospital I think it was in 2017, I'd already achieved a lot of success anyway by then and faced a lot of fears, but it was a fear that I, I'd never overcome. And I thought, mm, you know what? Growing up as a kid, I always loved hotels. I loved the the Ameri you know, the movies and the American films and watching the Italian gangster films and, and all the adventurous films and you know the adventure films, family films. And I was always fascinated with hotels. Not, not because, because I'm not into that BS, not because Oh, they're rich, they're wealthy, there's a, there's a lot of money there. It wasn't that reason, it was just that the, the, the architecture, like the design was fascinating and because I watched all these cool characters in movies, they would like pass through hotels, they might stay in a hotel like, like James Bond. There was a fascination around that world and obviously when you're not in that world and you've never passed through it, it's the unknown to you. You just see it on, on, the, on the television screen and like most of the people I grew up with and stuff, I used when I used to walk past nice hotels in central London, I used to think that, well, you're not allowed to go in there. Like, you have to have loads of money, or you've got to know people, or you've got to be like, um, you know, you've got to be like a celebrity, a super famous person. But do you know what, what most people don't know? That anybody can go into the nicest hotels in, in central London, or pretty much all around the world. I've been to all the nicest hotels in central London. I did it with a good friend of mine. Um, he was doing it before me, we did it together and had a lot of fun doing it. 
And then this is something that I've, I don't know if I've ever shared this before, but I'll share it now. I've always been a person since I was a young kid that if I'm afraid of something, I have to go and face it on my own at some point. Like I might need someone, maybe I needed a friend at the start to help me or go with a parent, but it's just something in me and I can't explain why it's part, it's part of my DNA. I have to go and, and earn that respect and, and, and explore it and, and be, be responsible. So I spent three years on my own going to all the best hotels in London, like the most extravagant, expensive, the highest star, not because I, I want to try and be somebody I'm not, nothing to that, because I wanted to, I want to prove to myself that I can do it. I want to face that fear and I want to educate myself on, you know, why is it that so many people are, are scared of these places? And, and what I found was, like, two things that, that always got me in with no problems, and I'm, I'm in one right now. Good manners, which is something that I always had anyway, and I was, my parents brought me up to have good etiquette and manners. You're like, good afternoon, yes, please, how are you? That's not something that is unnatural to me. That's like how I was taught growing up as a kid. Good manners and just um, believing that you can walk in and you know just just dressing smart. Like you don't have to overdo it. And they let you in, and, and you can sit down and, and, and have a coffee. So. For me, it goes way beyond like the surface level. Again, people, just the way a lot of people think today, it's like, oh, you just want to, you know, you just want to go into um, a fancy hotel because you want to, you know, you're materialistic or you're, and, it, and I'm not. I, I, I don't care about this stuff. I, I can go into a fancy hotel on my own or a friend. I can have a coffee, and then I can go and sit in on a park bench on my estate, on a council estate where I grew up, or I can go into Starbucks. But it's nice to have the confidence and the social skills to be able to go out and meet new people. And a lot of people think, well, when you go into these places, they're going to be rude, they're going to be snobby, they're going to turn you away. I'm going to give you my gen, my honest experience. I would say 90% of the time, when I've been in all these places, the people have been very friendly to me, very welcoming. Probably even more polite and welcoming than they are in Starbucks and and, sh and places like McDonald's. Um, but of course, there's, of course, you're always going to get people that are rude or a bit arrogant. But that's anywhere in life. So for me, it was a great learning experience. And then after the three years, like I kind of let it go. I didn't feel the need anymore to have to, you know, be in fancy hotels. And it's for me, it was never ever about. It's not to prove anything to anyone else or to show off or to be cool on social media. Because when I was doing this for a long time, no one knew. I just, I just kept it. I'm, I'm private but I like inspiring people especially guys of anxiety and, and for me as well this was a big part of me busting my social anxiety in this area so now I'm comfortable because I practiced it so it's basically getting out of your comfort zone and, and it really does educate you more about the world and about some of these limiting beliefs that we've got in society because you meet all different types of people in, in these hotels you meet working class you meet middle class and I'm someone who doesn't I don't judge or look at people by their class, but we do live in a culture where there are people that do do that. But I don't pay attention to it. I just treat people how I want to be treated, whatever background they're from. And you know, people can be arrogant and they can be rude from all you know walks of life. So it's not having that narrow-minded attitude. I've seen a few guys come on live streams. I understand, and they've got a very it's, it's a very kind of uneducated attitude and mindset. It's like, well, everybody's arrogant who's got money or everybody in a nice hotel is going to look down at you. It's like, no, they won't. But obviously, if you've got those negative beliefs and you're not educated, you're going to go away believing that. So, the, like I said, the, the tips are, you've got to come out of your comfort zone. And, and when you go in, if you're polite and you're just yourself, I don't try and be someone I'm not. I don't start, you know, um, because I go into a different place, start talking differently. I'm going to be myself. I talk the same way I do in person on all my videos. But obviously, I use use your manners. So use good manners, and any you can you can go in. And the crazy thing is, okay, yeah, the prices are more expensive. Like the coffee is going to be two, three times more. This place I'm in is lovely. The coffee is exactly the same. This is brilliant. I'm shocked that the coffee is the same price as Starbucks. Um, I think it's even a bit cheaper. So, you know, this is just an example of how my teaching has evolved from the days where I was just teaching guys how to overcome their anxiety with talking to women. And 
I still, I still will be doing some of that. I'm not eradicating that because obviously that's important for guys who want to get a girlfriend relationship. But that's not, that's not, that's like a small part of what my message is and what my my teaching is. It's really about um, helping people to to build um, confidence through facing facing their fears in in whatever area, whether it's going to hotels, joining a gym, public speaking, going on a date, asking someone out, talking to someone. So. Um, you got a lot out of it and um, I'll, I'll leave you with this right what's that saying where they say um, I can't remember there was a saying in boxing like uh, um, like being a good puncher or something like that will win you, a, win you a, a southern area title or British title but a good jab will take you around the world and I'll use my little analogy good social skills will take you around the whole world and for me good social skills is having manners and respect for other people treating them how you want to be treated and then you have no problem getting in getting into most places all right so become fearless and um if you're interested in getting any any coaching with me any confidence coaching and you want to start facing your anxiety whether it's talking to women people coming out your comfort zone starting a business traveling being able to go in hotels new places whatever area of your anxiety get in touch my email um is in the description below and we will set up a free Zoom call for 30, 40 minutes to have a chat, find out you know, what your challenges are, what your goals are, and whether my coaching can help you, all right? Speak to you soon, have a great one, become fearless.